If you're currently scrolling YouTube, searching for answers to anxiety, then this video is definitely one you'll wanna take a look at, as it's pretty much tailor-made for you. That's because I'm gonna be going through five very simple actions you can take today to get back in control of your anxiety levels. I'm also gonna explain why these things help. Hi, I'm Tim Box, I'm a mind coach, and for more than a decade now, I've been helping people overcome all sorts of emotional and psychological issues, particularly anxiety. Today, I'm gonna to share with you five practical tips to reduce anxiety right now. A lot of my videos talk about changing our ideas and beliefs and how we approach anxiety differently to achieve a different response. In this video, however, I'm gonna walk you through actual strategies and actions you can take to achieve change. I'll be explaining why they work and how you can implement them in your daily life. Also, as with all good YouTube videos, stick around to the end for a bonus tip that might just be the most valuable one in the long term. But anyway, enough intro, let's get into it. Let's start with the big one, social media. Now, I know it's everywhere and it's become so interwoven into our existence that it feels like we can't possibly live without it. But while social media is a fantastic way of communicating, staying in touch, sharing ideas, and updating our contacts on how we're doing, it's also the main reason why we live on such an anxious planet these days. There are two main effects worth discussing here. Firstly, social media is a constant barrage of information. We're bombarded with updates, news, opinions, and personal stories from hundreds, if not thousands of people every single day. This relentless stream of information can be incredibly overwhelming. Needless to say, whilst technology has advanced exponentially in recent times, our brains are still pretty much the same article that was dealing with things back in the day when we lived in caves. Our grey matter simply can't evolve fast enough to meet the demands put on us from this constant sea of information. Our brains are just not designed to process this much data all at once. This leads to inevitable overload that can significantly heighten our anxiety. Secondly, there's an old saying that I've become fond of quoting, comparison is the thief of joy. On social media, we mostly see curated versions of other people's lives, their highlights, as it were. Other people mostly show us their successes, the perfect moments, just as we try to filter out the worst of our own story and push the good stuff out for others to see. It's easy to start comparing ourselves to these idealized versions of others, compare them to the vast amount of our own negative stuff we filter out and feel like we're falling short. This constant, non-stop, negatively focused comparison can erode our self-esteem, which only fuels our anxiety. So the first tip here, as hard as it might feel, is to take a break. Log out, delete the apps if you need to, and give your mind some space to breathe. Yes, you might suffer from severe FOMO at first, but rather that than extreme overwhelm. You'll be surprised at how much calmer you feel once you deliberately unplug from your socials for a while. Next up, sleep. We all know that sleep is crucial for our physical and mental health. We know that when we're rested, we feel less anxious, and when we're tired, we feel more anxious. But how many of us actually prioritize sleep? More importantly, how many of us schedule it based on our actual need for sleep? I've lost count of the amount of clients I've seen that complain about an inability to get to sleep easily or to stay asleep for very long, that when asked how much time they schedule in to get their sleep, they say no more than seven hours or sometimes even less. So here's a tip. Don't just hope to get more sleep, but actually schedule more time in bed. This doesn't mean you need to be asleep the entire time, but rather give yourself the opportunity to rest. By allowing yourself more time in bed, you take the pressure off how quickly you need to fall asleep. You feel you need eight hours of sleep to feel good in the morning? Great, schedule being in bed for nine hours or more. Don't simply expect to go instantly unconscious the very moment your head hits the pillow. Even those that can do that will still have moments in the night when they're awake. Allowing extra time lifts the pressure and allows sleep to come more naturally. The simple fact is anxiety often worsens when we feel pressured to meet certain expectations, like falling asleep quickly. By scheduling ample time for rest, you create a more relaxed approach to sleep, which in turn helps reduce anxiety. Remember, it's not just about the quantity of sleep, 
but the quality of rest and relaxation you allow yourself. So anyone that knows this channel and my message will know how important this one is to me. I've talked about this so many times before, but it's worth repeating because it's such a crucial aspect of managing anxiety. For all the times in our life when anxiety is fueled by the potential rejection or negative attention of others, the person that criticizes you the most is very probably you. The phrase, we can be our own worst critic, exists for a reason. Most of us talk to ourselves in a way we would never dream of talking to others, often repeatedly or even constantly berating ourselves for not doing enough, not being enough. This self-castigation destroys our self-esteem, only adding to our anxiety levels. Instead, try treating yourself with the same kindness and compassion you would offer a friend. When you make a mistake, instead of beating yourself up, acknowledge it and learn from it. When you're feeling anxious, remind yourself that it's okay to feel this way. Being kind to yourself means giving yourself permission to be human, to have flaws, and to experience the full range of emotions without judgment. It's remarkable how unnatural this feels to many, but if there were one thing that would sort most people's anxiety issues out completely, it's this one. If you can change this, the difference in how you feel anxiety-wise will be huge. One of the most effective ways to reduce anxiety is to focus on one thing at a time. Anxiety often stems from worrying about the future, about all the things we need to do, or all the many and varied ways something could go wrong. This management of dozens of ideas at once can make the journey seem overwhelming and insurmountable. Now, we've already spoken about the dangers of becoming overwhelmed, but it's worth repeating. Us human beings have a very finite amount of things we can focus on at one time. It's a bit like juggling. We can handle a certain amount, but once we go beyond our limit, we don't just drop one ball, we drop them all. Instead, break things down into smaller, manageable steps. Focus on the next immediate step rather than the whole journey. You might have a long list of things to achieve today, but ultimately it doesn't matter how long that list is. At any given time, you only have one thing to do. You only have the next most important thing to address. This approach helps you stay present and grounded, reducing the feeling of overwhelm and making it easier to take action. If you choose to take one thing at a time, then it becomes impossible to become overwhelmed. Couple this approach with the idea that it's perfectly okay if you don't get everything achieved today. Often we only look at the day as a whole because we're trying to work out if we can get it all done in the time allocated. If we can say it might not be ideal, but it's okay if some of these things don't get done straight away, then it becomes much easier to focus on that one thing at a time. Again, it's all about lifting the pressure we put on ourselves. When you're fully present in the moment, your mind isn't racing ahead to all the possible what ifs. You can give your full attention to what's in front of you, which not only reduces anxiety, but also improves your overall effectiveness. Last, but certainly not least, accept the way you feel. Anxiety often becomes worse when we resist it, when we try to push it away or pretend it doesn't exist. The truth is there's nothing wrong with feeling anxious. And in fact, it would be strange if we didn't experience anxiety on a daily basis. By accepting your anxiety, you acknowledge its presence without feeling like something other than you is in control. This doesn't mean you like feeling anxious or that you want to feel high levels of anxiety forever. It simply means you recognize that it's okay to feel anxious about things that are important. Our bodies and minds are designed to feel anxiety. It's a natural response. When you stop resisting and start accepting, you remove the added layer of anxiety about the anxiety. This acceptance can actually reduce the intensity of your anxious feelings and help you manage them more effectively. Before we wrap up, here's that bonus tip I was promising you, and that is to take a look and consider becoming a member of this channel for ongoing anxiety support. For just £9 a month, you get access to all the extra content I put up every week exclusively for members. I regularly share insights, strategies, and tips to help you manage your anxiety and improve your mental health. By becoming a member, you also become part of a supportive community of people who understand what you're going through. I do weekly live streams to address members' concerns directly, and we also have an active community page on Facebook. Just hit the join button on the main page. So there you have it, my five top tips for reducing and getting control of anxiety now. 
If you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button and share it with others who might benefit. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. I'm Tim Box. Always remember to be kind to your mind and I'll see you next time.